um, access this this wonderful information. But just so the people on the call um, understand, you are being recorded. So let's keep everything appropriate. Uh, so without further ado, Grace and Mattia, take it over. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to meet you. I know it's virtual now, but I are very excited to be welcoming you to Mars. Uh, uh, my name is Grace, and I'm at our provost office, and I also am involved in our university relations department here in Florence at FUA. And I'll let my colleague, my introduce himself really quickly. Ciao a tutti. My name is... Okay, can you all hear me? That was a shock. Okay, we are close to one to each other, but in order to be able to stay without a mask, we are like uh, using two different laptops. So my name is Mattia Delle Piane. I'm the Alumni and Career Center Coordinator, and I will be working close with you guys here in Florence as Student Life and Development Department. So I will be one of your main contacts here in Florence for everything, okay, from the pickup to all the activities and any help that you might have. Okay, Chris, we can go to the next slide. So our goal today is to give you a taste of Florence, so prior, prior to your arrival. We know that you are at the USF Education Abroad team. Um, I know that you guys have been Looking into the enrollment process, that you're getting advice from wonderful colleagues. And so, an idea of what to expect uh, of daily life. So, um, just, just to put it out there, you know, we're in central Italy. So, Florence is the capital of Tuscany, which is the region that, uh, so, Tuscany would kind of uh, in Florence is a capital of Tuscany. Um, we're considered a mid-level, uh, larger city in Italy, smaller than Milan. And uh, what's really convenient about our location is that uh, daily life in Florence isn't so much different from most other. Grace, I'm I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Um, it's very very choppy and it's really hard to hear. Okay, let me see if Mattia and I can join from the same computer. Maybe that's better. Okay, okay. I'm so sorry. Let us know. No when you... Okay. Thanks, team. Okay, can you hear me? That my mic works better. Sa yes. Sa definitely much, better. Much more clear. Clear. The most beautiful city in the world. Can you hear me? No. Perfect. Okay, Thank you, just, just one. Just one. All right. So let's. I'll just quickly um, uh, recap what I was sharing with, with all of you. Uh, so basically, daily life in Florence is not very different from what you would see in most other cities in the world. Um, you know, the locals here they they go to school, they go to work, they see friends and family. The thing that we really wanted to highlight about Florence and what makes our city so unique is that we walk everywhere here in Florence. And so we're a walking city. Um, you know, oftentimes we'll get questions about, um, do, you, do, I, do I, will I ever need to use public transportation? Do I ever take the bus? And the answer is always no. Um, so while I was breaking up voice-wise, what I was um, sharing with you all, and this is very important for us to kind of highlight in terms of our geography, we're considered a mid-size uh, tier of the larger Italian city, uh, the larger Italian metropolitan cities. And so we're about an hour and a half south of Milan, an hour and a half north of Milan. We're right there at the middle of the boot here. Uh, Florence is uh, the capital of the region of Tuscany. So Tuscany would be, uh, let's say, uh, back in the U.S., you know, Florida is one of the, the 50 states. And so um, Tuscany is one of the Italian regions and Florence is a capital. So obviously, as a capital city of a region, um, we are uh, we're pretty densely populated. However, this uh, smaller contained size of our historic city center where all of our coursework activities and all of our student housing, everything that we do university wise is within the, the, the Florence city center. So actually from these two uh, photos that you see, I mean, these are literally views of the city that you'll be living in for 
six months, okay? Um, and just a quick note, anytime you see a slide with uh, some text in italics, these are direct quotes um, from one of our students who are, cur who are currently here in spring 2021. Uh, we wanted to make sure that in addition to our voices, Grace and Mattia and FUA as an institution, we wanted to make sure that you were able to read through um, some direct thoughts and direct uh, uh, items that the student wanted to share uh, with all of you here today. All right, we can go to the next slide, Chris. And interject just a couple of things I wanted to mention. I'll be very okay. quick, I promise. But when we think uh, students about the size of the Centro Storico, the historic center that Grace was referring to, you can almost think about the size of the Tampa campus. So very walkable, very manageable. You could almost traverse it from one end to the other in a half an hour. So a beautiful walking city. The other thing I want to add is a little more subjective, but it does have some support from surveys of international travelers, and that is the historic city center of Florence is almost always ranked in the top five most beautiful cities to walk in on the planet. Mm -hmm. So it is not simply a lovely city. We are talking about one that architecturally and in its design is one of the most beautiful and extraordinary to walk in. I promise I'll stop talking. <laughs> Those are great comments, Jim. Thank you so much. Um, now, before we get a little bit more into the specifics of life in Florence and what you will be expecting to encounter and also some pointers in terms of preparing for your experience and being successful in your experience here, obviously we wanted to take a moment to uh, look at COVID-19 um, and to just give you a little bit more perspective in terms of how, um, what the COVID response is here. So one thing uh, that's really important for us to highlight from the get-go is that there are, so obviously the U.S. and Italy are completely different countries, and so there are different approaches and different strategies in place in terms of COVID-19. Um, so from an Italian standpoint, basically our central government mandates for the entire country, okay? So this has been the case since, uh, since last March when uh, we were at the beginning of the pandemic. And so um, obviously, you know, any uh, students, um, anyone who's physically present in Italy, everyone is expected to be in compliance with national uh, safety uh, safety protocol. Um, the other important thing to mention is that what we explain, what we describe in terms of our environment today could change. Um, our national legislation for COVID changes on average on a monthly basis. And so to give an example, uh, I personally, you know, I'm from the U.S. myself, uh, I grew up in California, and these days I'm getting a, a lot of messages from friends and family back home saying, I'm seeing that Italy is, in, is having another lockdown, are you okay? And, and so then I have to break it down culturally for them, um, because Easter weekend is kind of like Memorial Day weekend in the States where everybody, it's like that's the time where you start going to the beaches, you start traveling. Um, we're also kind of like the idea of spring break, right, from a, a college perspective. Easter weekend, a lot of people may not know this abroad, it is the white weekend for people to go to their second beach homes, to go to the mountains, just to be moving around and seeing people. And so the government wanted to preemptively um, uh, foresee the, the, the moves and the steps of the citizens. And so just as a precautionary measure, because the weather's getting nicer and we, don't, we still don't want people to be traveling around, um, you know, randomly at this time, um, the government put in these very temporary measures for uh, this month leading up to Easter weekend, which is next weekend. And then things will um, become more relaxed again after that. So it's important to keep these items in mind as you're reading, uh, reading the news and looking at international media. So getting back to the fact that our government is updating uh, COVID regulation on a, on a gradual and progressive basis, um, we basically, what we have in terms of our regions here is that all of our regions are color coded, okay? So basically we have four different colors, uh, white, yellow, uh, orange, and red. Um, these colors are not uh, uh, fixed colors. Every two weeks, depending on the many factors that the Institute of National Institute of Health looks at, um, the regions will be assigned colors. And so a region may be a color for two weeks, it may change colors for the next two weeks and so on and so forth. Tuscany has been okay. Um, we have never gone red unless it was, you know, for the entire country to go red. Um, right now, a nationwide curfew is in place from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Um, but people will always have, let's say that you're, you know, 
um, you were outside and at 10.01, you realize, oh my goodness, I'm still outside, you will always have the right to go home. So um, that's important to kind of outline because it's not like if you're caught outside at 10 p.m., something's going to happen to you. Um, and as I mentioned before, our zones are currently updated every single two weeks. Um, so right now in Florence, all of our stores are open. We have all of our restaurants open for takeout. Um, basically, there's no uh, limitation of movement within the city. Um, and then, you know, next month, it may be different. You know, we may go into a different color. Uh, we So in the regions where restaurants are open for in-dining, uh, in dining options, you know, you you can you can have restaurants open from 6 p.m. But in any case, across colors, what's really important for us to highlight is that first and foremost, the institution will always have uh, activities and services for students. Uh, on campus signing options will always be guaranteed to our students. Um, support services are always open, uh, will always be offered, and most importantly, your academics and the fulfillment of your credits and your course activities will always be completed and fulfilled for you as a pro, uh, as a student participant of the study abroad program, okay? Um, you know, obviously none of us have the crystal ball in our hands. However, what we do predict, predict is um, as we move out of Easter and uh, towards the latter half of the spring and going into the summer, we predict improvement basically. Um, how we've been seeing legislation um, item, uh, pieces of legislation being uh, put out and updated. We've been only seeing improvement from last March. Um, our government is very cautious, and I'm going to just put that out there. It's important for you all to know. Um, so there is definitely a strong preference here for everyone to be on the same page and to be basically following the same protocols. But we do definitely see things um, opening up again. Um, we do see, you know, more opportunities for mobility, and uh, the city itself is incredibly safe. Um, and before we go into the next slides, the last thing I wanted to leave with you as, a, as an item for reflection is that right now is an incredibly special time to be in Florence, to be in Italy, to be studying abroad, because you will be able to experience and really get into the fabric of the city that you're living in. Um, as if it were really yours. Um, you're not going to be fighting against tourists. You're not going to be fighting against all these visitors. The city will be yours. And so this is something that is a very rare and special opportunity um, that, you know, um, uh, students in the future when tourism will be back to normal, of course, we'll find ways for them to be able to address that and to be able to experience the city as theirs. But you in particular will really have this fortunate position of being able to be in Florence at a very Italian time for Florence. And so we can move on to the next slide, Chris. Thank you. Okay, so preparing for life in Florence. Um, as we were talking with our USF colleagues, we were thinking together about what are some important pointers. And I really think that Mattia should uh, provide some of his perspectives. He is the Italian out of the two of us. Um, but in terms of just general things to think about, um, general reflections and, and thoughts and, and just overall um, items for preparation, um, I mean, this is not a complete list by any means, but these are things that we do see um, that are important to address on a regular basis as we meet students over academic years, over different terms. First and foremost, it's really, really important to dismantle stereotypes that you may have Italy and to be open-minded. Why do I say this? Because Italy just happens to be one of the most, um, I would say, media exposed countries in the world, right? For its food, its fashion. We see Italy on TV and movies, on streaming all the time. And so it's very easy to, um, you know, cultivate certain ideas about a country without having been there and to realize when you get here, oh, okay, things are like this for a different reason. So maybe Mattia can give us an example of what are, what, what's something common that people are often ask to you as an Italian and you, and you have to respond, no, this is not what it's like. I mean, okay, all the food that maybe might be considered Italian back in the United States, I mean, some students, they come here and we're like, oh, okay, so you guys, like, you go in jail if you eat pineapple and pizza, right? No, you're not going. Or you cannot have cappuccino after 11 p.m. I mean, of course you can. Uh, my suggestion is to come here with uh, always with an open mind, okay? Uh, like, take all the Italian stereotype, all the cliché, put in a trash, and come here, okay? Of course, cultural shock is a thing. It might happen in the first two days, one week, two weeks. We are here to help. Everyone has passed through this adjustment. And at the end of the time, as it's written then, you will call your Florence home. It's not your home away from home. It will be your home. 
like your casa, your apartment, your everything. And as Grace has said before, I've been working here and close contact with students in the past five years. And I never seen students so happy to be in Florence like as of today. And I'm telling this because now they actually experience the Italian it Italianity, let's say, forgive me for the term, right? The being Italian. They see that the Italian are even more welcoming. They are they have discovered places in Florence that sometimes not even I do I don't know, and I've been growing up here. So they're really, really feeling the city and they're becoming like Florentine. This is one of the main the goal also that us as an institution we have. I think we can go to the next slide. I mean, of course, research on where we are, uh, what is Florence. You don't need to speak Italian, of course, but I really, uh, I'm sure you already know this. Of course, you can start researching some basic uh, Italian words like ciao, grazie, thank you very much, and prego, and of course, that means you will have to use your body language all the time. <laughs> we can go to the next slide, yes. right? So life at FUA, of course, even if we are in the middle of the pandemic, they are uh, not really in the middle, but we are. Uh, we have a lot towards of towards the end. Towards the end, <laughs> not for good. And we have plenty of activities that we can do within our facility, starting from uh, extracurricular activities. We do offer language and cultural exchange program. We have a lot of uh, Italian students from. Uh, the city of Florence, that they actually want to practice their English. And so they're meeting up with our students to practice English and Italian or to just have a cultural exchange. In our Palazzi Community Center, which is basically the picture that you're seeing on this slide, uh, you see the beautiful garden, the one below is our spa, uh, and then the third one is our pastry lab. This is always open Monday to Friday, and also on Saturday over summer. And this is a place in which you will be, it will be your, your home, okay? This is a place that even when all the restaurants in the city are doing takeout, here is the place where you can actually sit, have a good dish, have a glass of wine, uh, enjoy your time. Because even if it's amazing and it looks great, it's also a school canteen, okay? When I say a school canteen, don't have the, the stereotype of a school canteen. This is actually a high-level fancy restaurant entirely run and managed by our students. Here is where you can use your voucher as well as for the spa. So you will have a, always have a, a spot where you can chill, where you can study, where you can also meet with other students. And of course, taste one of the gourmet meal prepared by our students. Really on time here, you can also uh, decide to join some non-credit classes, like some pizza making or gelato making, cooking class. You can do, go to the spa, uh, have a treatment. You can actually go for a walk around Florence. As we say, it's a walking distance city. You can go and discover everywhere. Florence is not just the city center. This again is one of the first times that I've seen students going out of the city center, discover that, okay, so, Florence is not only monuments, we are discovering like parks and garden outside, the stadium and everything. I think we can go to the next slide, unless you want to add something. No, no, I think you've covered it really okay. well. Um, in terms of, uh, so we all know why you, choose, uh, you chose FUA, because you're excited to come to Florence, you're excited to join um, our academic courses, meet our faculty, and obviously take advantage of the USF faculty top courses. Um, we just wanted to point your attention to a couple of um, elements of advantage, uh, so um, certain things that you will encounter here on campus and uh, that are really trademark distinctions of uh, our institution. So first and foremost, we have a very international student population um, and I'm sure and we know that at USF there are a lot of students who come from different countries we actually have out of USF students here in Florence right now some students are US citizens other students are USF international students who have different passports come from different nationalities and so um, you'll find a very similar uh, student uh, population here we on average host uh, anywhere from uh, 35 to 40 different nationalities on campus so students come from all different countries um, we have a really 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 amazing staff and faculty and I know every university says that but we really want to highlight that one of the, the main priorities of our leadership and, and this is a, a message that is filtered down to the entire staff is yes as an academic institution academics are the key academics are priority but our leadership and especially our president is always stressed 
that the student experience, because of our international location, because we are hosting students from so many different countries, student life and student services must have the same uh, prioritization of the academic component of our programs. And so, um, and also, you know, our, our campus, um, and, and you'll have a couple of views of it later on in the presentation, um, because we're in different uh, uh, locations in the city center, getting from campus to campus building is an experience uh, in itself. Um, and, and it's also an exploration, just going to class is also an exploration of the city of Florence. Um, our classroom ratios and student to faculty ratios are, um, are, are, are much smaller than maybe some of the larger lecture uh, halls that you, that you may be involved in in terms of your coursework as an undergraduate student. So typically our classrooms will host anywhere from eight to let's say 30 students. And so you really do have this um, incredible opportunity uh, to be able to get to know your faculty really well and have some great interactions uh, during your during your classes. And last but not least, we have this unique learning model that is really our trademark here at FUA, where for us learning is about learning through experience. And so um, our model really wants students to be involved in experiential learning for the purpose of being engaged within the community with this ultimate goal of having cultural integration being accessible to all students. And so the, the main um, point for us is that through what you're studying, we want you to be able to experience the city and also give back to the city. And so many of our courses have experiential learning or service learning components, um, or even just experiential learning projects that are part of your classes. And they will have you involved in real life experiences that will give you these concrete experiences that you can take away with you. They're great for your resumes in terms of the projects that you will work on, but also they're great in terms of personal enrichment to, to be able to really say, okay, I've lived what I studied. Chris, we can go to the next slide. All right, so this is an important question. How, how, how can I make sure that my experience is successful? So these are just, again, this, we don't want um, any of these lists to seem like a one size fit all solution um, to preparing for studying abroad. Uh, but these are some important uh, important factors that we would like to highlight. So uh, when you arrive in Florence and you go through the arrivals, apartment check-ins, and the orientation phase, uh, you will be introduced to our MyFUA platform, which will be everything in terms of course communication, requesting certain uh, student services. It's all on MyFUA. So we highly encourage that you take the time once you receive access, and this will happen upon arrival, um, to get familiar, to get to know MyFUA. How does it work? Um, also, make sure to, um, during orientation, you will go over academic policy. You know, make sure to take the notes. Make sure to note any questions that you may have. Also, some of your courses may have some special academic dates. Put them in your calendar. It's really important to kind of map out everything at the start of your experience so that um, that way you can ensure that you'll just be able to continually and gradually progress uh, throughout your coursework and your whole experience in Florence. Um, it's important to stay connected with advisors and faculty on a constant basis. Um, the third point is something that is really important for us. Uh, be gentle and be kind with yourself. Mattia mentioned earlier that there are there will be moments of uh, cultural transition, cultural shock. Um, they're never easy, and you'll go through, it, it, it doesn't, just because, let's say, you know, maybe some of you are traveling with a friend, you and a friend have decided together, let's go abroad together, um, but it's not a given that you and your friend will go through the same phases of cultural transition, so what's really important is that you don't beat yourself up, and again, I think that one of the, the things that we often tell, forget to tell ourselves is that we do have to be gentle with ourselves and to give ourselves a chance. Um, and again, this is connected to the point above, above, whenever you are going through any ups and downs in terms of cultural transition, that's why that connection with advisors and your faculty members is so important. They can help point you towards the right resources or give you different perspectives that may just you know, change a day from uh, A to Z or vice versa in an instant. Um, you definitely want to establish positive, constructive social networks um, that will help sustain your experience. And uh, when I when we talk about social networks, you know, we also um, definitely want to think of your social networks as expanding concepts once you get to Florence. You know, you'll meet people from uh, different countries, uh, different U.S. institutions. So it's really good to be open-minded to make 
uh, to, to establish network relationships within your network to expand your network. Um, and then last but not least, this is kind of related to some of the stereotypes we were talking about earlier. Um, you know, Florence does have, and I, and I know that you'll all be familiar with the example of Disney World or the um, idea of seeing a place in a postcard. Uh, Florence actually has millions of postcards dedicated to it. So it really does happen to be a postcard city. Uh, but you really want to scratch beyond the surface of, of the postcard. Mm -hmm. Matia talked a little earlier about some of the students this semester who are exploring, you know, some neighborhoods where you don't have any monuments or regular people live here in Florence outside of the historic city center. Um, you really don't want to take for, uh, for granted, you know, I mean, we're very privileged to be in the historic city center everywhere we are in terms of a campus location, in terms of your housing locations, you are in very monument, monumental spaces. But it's really good to get beyond the sheen and the shininess of the surface and to really try to get a grasp for what Florence is like as a city. We can move on, Chris. What can I do during my time in Florence? Of course, during the first days, we, as we mentioned before, with orientation is a lot of information. Of course, especially during the orientation, make sure to ask any question, but even during all your stay, we're always available to, to ask any question that might arise later on when you after you gather all the information. Uh, we always ask our student ask our student to find their daily rhythm. Okay. It's nice because here, as I say, Italians are super welcoming, okay, especially in a period like this. So find your own, for example, coffee next to your apartment. If you go there, they will start to learn what you get. And sometimes like after three days, four days, you just get in, you don't even ask and your cappuccino or latte is ready for you, okay? Get your routine as you actually do uh, at home, okay? Try to plan, okay? Weekends are perfect to visit around. Ask your professor, ask your advisor what you can do, which trip, which secret garden, okay? I always love to tell secrets about Florence and the secret places that are not maybe listed in the most famous tourist guide. We have a lot of hidden places and in the story. Take your time to discover this, okay? Then, of course, take your time to, it will be summer, eat a lot of gelato, <laughs> right? And bring me some, please. Uh, and then, of course, think about clean meal planning. As we mentioned before, you guys will have a, a partial meal plan. Is it partial? Because, of course, we want you guys to not only eat it, in our school restaurant, which is delicious food prepared by our student, but we want you also to discover different food, different food, uh, restaurant, uh, different area of Florence. But of course, make sure to use those vouchers either at our Fedora Pastry Lab or our spa. Uh, of course, we are always available also to give you some suggestion to where which restaurant you want to go or you don't want to go, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to the next slide. I think we are heading to what are classes like? Okay, as of today, I mean, and most of the time we are doing in-person classes, even for the nature of our classes. Most of our classes, as Grace mentioned before, uh, are uh, really focused on the experiential learning. So they can be considered also from the Italian authorities as lab. So we always have the authorization to have in classes, uh, in person classes for most of our courses, even if in case of a lockdown. Of course, our classes are smaller, as we mentioned before, and we are they are located in different part, different location of the city center of Florence. They are all work, work in this, and so don't worry. Uh, especially on the first days of class, you will get late. Maybe you will get lost because all the street might look the same. But then you will become a Florentine, okay? You became an Italian, and you will see that maybe tourists will ask you for information on where to go, uh, or how to find the Duomo, or anything. Uh, of course, everything is teach is taught in English, except of course if you are selecting an Italian language course, and of course expect to do also assignment. On my FUA, our Moodle platform, the professor uh, will always upload assignment, a workshop, seminar, video to read in order to be to you to be prepared for the classroom. Uh, during summer, classes are held on a daily basis because we are, they are what we call intensive courses. So let's say you are taking two classes, three class, three two courses, or three courses, or four courses. You will have class every day. They are intensive and they are they last for three weeks. It's really good because you really 
six, sorry. You really uh, build a special relation with the professor, okay? So also this way you will see him or her every day and you will have a better uh, learning. That's that slide, of course, those pictures are part of our campus, beautiful campus, that of course, it's during summer because the, we have the flowers, right? Yeah, Springtime. Spring time. Next slide, please, Chris. Okay, a little bit about housing. As we say, we always say that FUA, AUF, our campus is the city center of Florence. So also our apartments are located within the city center of Florence, uh, about 10, 15 minutes walking distance from the facility. When we are talking about students' apartment, we are actually talking about real apartment, as you can see there. Uh, we want our student not to be a foreigner in Florence, but we want our student to become locals, as I mentioned before. For this reason, you will also live like a local, okay? So you will live in an apartment, in a shared apartment with, of course, other students, mostly from uh, USF, of course, uh, but in a, in a building lived by other international students or Italian students or Italian family. So you will be, of course, be respectful of your neighbors because they are not same age or same culture as you, but you will have your uh, entire apartment with internet connection, AC, uh, wi uh, washing machine, uh, kitchen, restroom and everything. We don't have the dryer, okay, but it will be hot, the clothes we'll dry, uh, <laughs> we'll dry in a second, so don't worry about that. But everything is included. Also, the basic back liners, blanket, towels are included. Of course, if you want to bring some extra, you are more than welcome, but I suggest you do not bring so much stuff in your luggage, okay, even because we don't have so many elevators here in Florence because elevators were not a thing during the renaissance area so we are we are still have uh, historical buildings so i would suggest to not bring so much stuff here because you want to bring some stuff from italy back home to your friends and relatives or just for you so yes so you will have your apartment you can request this is a question that they always ask me uh, you can request to be housed with uh, one of your friends of course the request must be mutual so if you are, if I'm requesting to be housed with, not Grace because we don't do, go ahead, with Mario, let's say, or with Jim, okay? Jim also need to request Mattia in their application form, okay? You can also request a single room, uh, where there will be uh, an extra cost. We cannot grant it because, uh, of course, the spots are limited. Uh, so you might be in a multiple room with two students or three students. Of course, now with COVID, we have also here make the, the population inside the apartment smaller, okay? So an apartment that before sweet, let's say, four students, now it's for two. So you will have even more living space inside your apartment. We, I'm sure we can go to the yes. next slide. Where can I find help if needed? Of course, you will soon familiarize where the main FUA front desk are, and this will be the main contact where you have to, to which you have, you can ask any question. Of course, everyone at FUA is always welcome to answer your question, or if they don't know the answer, direct you to the right person. Uh, our student life and, de and development department is always available to help you for any question, okay? No question is silly and stupid. Every question are welcome. We also have a 24 hour emergency line, okay? So it works all day long, all night long. So in case of real emergency, you can always reach out to uh, our emergency line and we will come and assist you. Uh, this is important, and I always say to, to students, don't be afraid to ask, to raise a concern or anything. We want you to enjoy your best time of your life here. So if you have any short, small problem, any concern or anything, please speak it up. Okay, I think we can... Okay, stop. I think now it's time for questions. questions. I can go answer it. Jesuana, sorry for the pronunciation. Do you know if it's cold at night in the apartment or warm? Not in June. Not in June. Not it in will July. be hot. It will be really hot. You guys have the AC, okay? And so, I mean, of course, maybe compared to Florida, 
I, oh. I've never been to Florida, so well, sorry. But... You know, um, usually we, we tell people that Florence is very humid, but we realize that <laughs> for folks from Florida, it's normal. Yeah. It's a normal level of humidity, so definitely keep that in mind. Yeah, I don't mind commenting. Uh, those of you who are going in the A session, uh, I think some of the mornings and evenings, you'll find it very you know, pleasantly cool, a light sweater, and it warms up during the day. Those in the B session or, or doing the, the science and psychology programs, you'll find it warms up a little bit during them. The apartments, they have air condition. So, you know, you can always remain comfortable. Um, but relative to Grace's comment, yes, I, I, I highlight that in orientation because as, as humid as we might think it might be uh, from the Florentine perspective, here in Florida, we're, we hover about a foot above sea level in a subtropical zone. It's not terribly humid when you get to Florence. Yeah. It's quite a relief. It's definitely win on the humidity point. <laughs> <laughs> quite a relief when you get to Florence after our summer humidity. That's great, folks. I'm gonna jump in really quick and just encourage the group you know, use the chat function. If you're one of those brave, uh, brave study abroad students, feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hand. Um, and we'll definitely want to get through as many questions as we can in the next 20 minutes. Um, I see a question from Alexis here. Are housing applications available now? Yeah, let me address that quickly. What it's going to be is shortly in, in about a week's time, I'm going to send out to all of the committed students. So this is the committed students only because we don't want you going into the Florence uh, application unless you've formally committed to the program. But you'll be given um, a special link and a passcode, password we call a provider ID. And that's gonna allow you, because you've had our application now and you've committed, so there's still some pieces you have to do for that. But then you're gonna to have to go in and create an application with Florence University of the Arts, American University of Florence. In that application process, two very important things will happen. One will be you'll select your courses. So when we were discussing in the course selection phase, very important to have alternate courses if possible, if for two, at least for every one of your primary choices. And the second is you are going to be able to do your housing application. So as Mattia referenced, if you have a roommate in mind, make sure that you put their name, make sure they also put your name on. And as we always say in the single room, of course, as always, you know, you can put in the request. All of these, I have to say at the outset, we cannot make absolute 100% guarantees. So our, our friends at, uh, at FUAAUF do the most fantastic job to accommodate every request, but many requests can come in and there can be interesting intersections of rooms that are available and roommate requests and so forth. So it's never 100% guarantee, but every effort is made to honor them as, as best we can. Thanks, Jim. And there's some really good questions going on in the chat. But before we get to those, I'm going to get the Maximilian here. Max, do you have a question for the group? Unmute yourself and go for it. All right. So um, I'm sorry, it's a bit noisy in here. But you said that there were um, extracurricular activities that are available for us. Can you explain a little bit more how we can get involved with those? Sure. Thank you. Uh, Matt, can, can we call you Max for short? Okay. Yes, that works. That's a great question, Max. And so our activities here are varied. We have different types of activities and we have a full calendar of activities. So what's really exciting about this year in particular is that we put a big focus on sustainability. And so we have all these seminars, wellness activities, um, and, and basically sustainability themed uh, initiatives that students can join. And what's really interesting about some of our activities and extracurriculars is that they're also open to locals. And so um, just participating in extracurriculars at FUA may put you in a very local context. Um, and then obviously our student life staff will organize uh, city walks. Um, we also have, um, you know, we have uh, a sports themed activities as well. So it really goes across the board. Um, and then and then one thing that Mathieu mentioned earlier is that um, let's, you know, you're going to have your academic course load, right? So you know which classes that you're taking uh, during your six weeks here in Florence. Um, they, sometimes we, we have students who maybe uh, come from, you know, uh, non-hospitality or non-food studies majors that arrive here and realize, oh my goodness, FUA also has a whole hospitality division. So I really like food. I'm, I'm someone who 
um, you know, loves to cook or I love uh, in, in exploring the food scene, is there something that I can do as a non-credit activity? We have these uh, cooking classes and gastronomic walking tours um, that are offered uh, at a very, very special student price for students who are at FUA. And so those are classes that you can add on whenever you want. They're offered every single week um, of the year, okay? And I think we need to... I'm going to answer which one Tanisha we? question. Tanisha, Do yeah. locals enjoy when we engage with them? I want to meet as many locals as possible and talk to them, but my Italian is very rusty. And I'm not sure if culturally it's okay to just go up and then and to talk. Perfect. That's great. I mean, of course, the only thing is that they might answer in English to you, but it's not because they don't like your Italian. It would be because they want to improve their English. So you will have this language, let's say, fight, okay? But it's super, super nice. It's part of our culture to just talk. Maybe just don't stop someone randomly in the street. But uh, we like to even just stop by a chat or in a coffee uh, or in the restaurant. Uh, we like a lot to talk. We like, you know, la bella vita, like take everything easy, everything enjoyable. So definitely, of course, Tanisha, you want to sign up for the chat call program, the language exchange program, once you get here. Okay, so don't worry. Uh, and also, yeah. one thing that I wanted to add is that, you know, don't forget that within our staff, there are many, I mean, our staff are locals here in Florence. And so it would be a great idea to maybe first try out with our staff members or some of your faculty members and, you know, just let them know, hey, I'm really, um, you know, I'm beyond the academic lives that we will all be leading when you are here. But, you know, just ask people on a personal level, like, you know, do you mind if I practice a couple of phrases with you? What do you think? Um, so, you know, you can have a safe space for to try things out and then um, let's say that you're at a grocery store and you're about to reach for the same bag of salad as somebody else and that could be that moment where you can put your skills to practice, okay? But it is very important what Mattia mentioned. Um, I think something we didn't mention earlier is how international Florence is. We're smaller than Rome, we're smaller than Milan, which are respectively the political and economic capitals of Italy, but we are the cultural capital of Italy, truly. And um, over the years, Florence has historically, in the last couple of centuries, has always had uh, non-local populations living here. So the city itself seems to be very, I mean, I have friends in both Milan and Rome that tell me all the time, oh, I, I really miss living in Florence because it just feels more international and it truly is an international city. Sophia, how much would you all suggest to take to spend to a restaurant slash cafe a week? Just to give an example, one espresso, it's one euro. Yep. One cappuccino, one euro and 20 cent, one euro and 50. Uh, a first course or a pizza is between six and eight euro, okay? Then, of course, this question is depend how much you eat outside, okay? Uh, you, have, you will have in your apartment a fully equipped kitchen, okay? So we always encourage students to go to the fresh market in the morning or the supermarket, the normal one, buy some food, try your uh, culinary skills, okay, try to learn some dishes. And of course, so this is really a question that might uh, vary from student to student, but these are the prices that I mentioned before. So Florence, despite being an international and a touristic city, is still considered quite cheap compared to some places in, in New York. Yeah, in the um, uh, US, so sorry. <laughs> um, I think generally speaking, the cost of dining out is much less uh, than the US. Uh, but what's also nice about Florence is that you have everything from really inexpensive uh, street food all the way to Michelin starred restaurants. And so, especially for you foodies in the crowd, you really have this great menu of types of restaurants you can go to. Um, and then you can shop. I mean, we have all the grocery stores. And so going grocery shopping is no different than in the States. You'll find that it's very inexpensive. If you go to the farmer's market for fresh veg vegetables, you'll be shocked at how inexpensive vegetables are. Um, uh, I wanted to put together two questions. One is from Jezoana. Mm -hmm. Forgive me for my pronunciation. You guys all man also mentioned in another meeting about the clothes and that flip-flops aren't warm and seen just a bit shoes. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, Black tops, seen as though it would be hot, and also down. Uh, Taylor asks, "What is the typical outfit correct correct to wear when attending class or checking out a cafe?" At USF, majority wear comfy gym attire or classes. You want to answer that? Sure. <laughs> okay. So it is true that in Italy, uh, people don't wear flip flops 
in town, right? So I, I'm talking about the rubber flip flops, the ones that go between your toes. Um, those are really something that you wear on the sand at the beach, okay? However, it doesn't mean that you can't wear sandals. And so a suggestion is, you know, a nice pair of sandals. Um, you may even want to buy a pair when you're out here. Um, and, and actually, maybe we should add something a little bit later about packing too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, a nice, you know, a nice pair of sandals. Um, you really want to avoid the rubber flip flops when you're in town. Um, and again, you know, it's not like you have to be fully covered. You know, um, there was a, a mention about tank tops. Um, basically, when Italians are out and about, you know, they usually tend to wear, you know, it could be a short sleeve shirt, it could be a nice tank top, it could be, you know, with like kind of I mean, about where their their cutoff shorts and, and their tank tops. But generally speaking, um, you know, again, you don't have to feel like you're super formal, but let's say uh an example outfit could be, you know, it could be like a nice skirt with a nice pair of sandals and a top, which it doesn't have to be a button down. I mean, everyone, there are many different types of style here. You know, Italy is one of um, the world's fashion capital along with France. And so you'll see all different styles here. It's really this thing about the flip flops that will seem strange to Italians when wearing rubber flip flops in the city. Yeah, Annelise, will orientation be at FUA or online? Of course, our orientation will be in person once you get here. I'm sure you will have some pre-departure orientation, yes. right, Jim? Yes, and honestly, we're going to give you um, a full complement of orientations. You begin, some of you have already begun the general online orientation that all students have to complete, and we do some of these by region, so you've had the European one. Prior to your departure, I'll be doing an orientation. Most likely, we'll have to conduct it in this online setting like we're doing now and i take the uh, the information from the general orientation and i siphon it down specific to florence studying in florence and then when you arrive there's an orientation in florence on site so we feel that the triad of those orientations has you completely well prepared and there will in this format again be a plethora of information that we disseminate and then open up for questions so we're going to run through all of that Everyone does that every year. We're just doing it in this virtual format now, but it is very comprehensive. It is also mandatory. So I will be writing you shortly about that and ask you to mark your calendars. There's a question from Christian about the uh, non-credit uh, food and wine classes that we have. Yeah, so there, you don't have to worry about that right now. Once you get to Florence, they're basically offered every single day from 3 to 5.30. Um, some of you may have courses at that time. So for those students who have an interest, you know, we'll definitely be organizing additional activities for you. But our standard food, it's called the Florence Food and Wine Experience course. And any student can join any one, two, three, however many classes you want at a very low cost per class with the special uh, student discount. Um, I think there's a question uh, for Jim from Taya. Wilson. Yeah. Is this regarding, uh, it looks like uh, Diana's written about communicating with one another that are in the study abroad group before getting to Florence. I believe already the students have, have begun a group me page. And one of the reasons I, I, as an agent of the university, I'm not allowed to formally get involved in a lot of the student social media pages, but uh, I believe there's one and, and we have that and we can disseminate that out to the group of students so you can begin communicating that way. And then I think we're going to be planning, uh, I know we're going to be planning some other meetings like this, town hall gatherings. So through that, we can begin sharing um, lists. Also, I will soon be sending out information on airfare. And in there, and this is pertinent to also, I'm going to bridge this into getting your airline ticket. In there, I also put out a mention where if the student gives me permission, because these are university regulations, student gives me permission to share their name and contact email, and it must be your USF email, with the other members of the group, and I almost always have everybody say, yes, please share my email, then I'll send that out to everyone else. So that's a way you can begin to coordinate your flights and begin planning those together, and another way you can begin to link up socially. Jim, I'm gonna I'm gonna chime in here really quick. There's a question from from Taya about her course approval form um, that she had filled out a while ago. Yes. Um, and she's wondering if she'd be able to register for different classes than she originally planned on her form, and where yes. can she find out more information? Okay, this and uh, 
this is extremely important. Uh, first of all, I want to draw everyone's attention in the chat. Snow put out the group me page so that was created from the last town hall meeting. So everyone who's who's interested in that, please go on. As far as the classes, this is critical. Each of you has submitted a signed course selection form that your academic advisor completed with you. If you are making changes to that, and that's perfectly fine, please either download that form, have it amended to include the new classes you're interested in, and have it re-signed by your major academic advisor and returned to me. You won't be able to re-add it to the applications. One of us in the administration will have to do that. Or simply go to the website, print out a second course selection form, have that completed with the new courses and return to me. I keep all of them because as you move through the process and begin to group chat with one another, you may make changes in your courses. But remember, when we get to the FUA AUF application, you will be finalizing courses. You'll be finalizing courses and doing your room selection and so forth, so have that in mind. Make sure you do not register for a class that has not been approved by your advisor. Thanks, Jim. Uh, looks like Max has his hand up again. Go for it, Max. So I don't have access to the chat box on Teams. Can you send me that group chat? I got you. I'll send it. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Well, I actually don't have access to the to the chat either. Um, is this? Caesar, is that Caesar? Yeah, is that you? Caesar okay. Milano. Yeah, uh, I will send it to both of you right now. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, and I'll add you to this team as well, so you have access to it. Okay, and actually, so what I'm going to do is I, I have some standardized language that I send out when we have the social media pages, and I'll make sure that by um, tomorrow everyone has that. Everyone, including all the accepted students who may want to commit, have an opportunity to join through that group me page. I'll get that out to everyone. And as we wait for any final questions to come in, I wanted to circle back to the uh, suitcase topic that um, we had mentioned. Do not overpack. Uh, why? Reason one, everything that you normally use back home in terms of beauty products, there's a Sephora here, um, all the pharmacies will have all of your basic needs for body wash, supermarket, same thing, uh, toothbrushes, toothpaste. I mean, really don't, um, don't bring don't bring extras of just your basic items. Uh, B, or reason two, for clothing, you will have all of the international brands here. So obviously we have the Zara's, we have the H&M's, um, but there are a lot of, you know, local uh, Italian companies that you may not encounter back, back in the U.S. And so let's say you need to buy a T-shirt because you ripped it for whatever reason. Um, I hope not, but if it were to happen, you can easily pick up a T-shirt, um, you know, underwear, everything in, in a jiffy. Um, what I will definitely uh, suggest is um, for whatever shoes that you're bringing, uh, except for the flip flops, which we won't be wearing in the in the center, um, you definitely want to have a you want to have comfortable shoes because you will be yes. walking every single day. So you know, today I'm wearing. So actually, uh, Mattia has his uh, has a pair of Adidas. <laughs> He's actually showing up his foot. And I guess those are the same too. Um, I, I'm from California, so I'm always uh, loyal to my bands, always. Um, so again, you know, these are more, you know, sneakers are more than fine to wear to go out and about. Whether they're sneakers, whether they're a nice pair of sandals with the uh, strappy leather um, laces, whatever it is, make sure that they're comfortable because you'll be walking every single day. If you are looking at your items in your closet and thinking, do I need that extra shirt? The answer is no. Um, you want to make sure that you have space in your suitcase before you close it up because you will buy more things here, guaranteed. Very good. I know we're running out of time. I just wanted to, everything Grace uh, told you is exactly right and we cover a lot of the packing and so forth. I just wanted to say that after we conclude this, and I know that Chris and Snow may be summarizing some other questions and sending them to me, we'll, we'll get to them as quickly as we can, but we are absolutely certain that you have the most extraordinary academic and cultural experience lying ahead of you for this summer. And it's due to the fabulous work that uh, that our colleagues and friends at FUA AUF have done. When Grace was talking about the extraordinary academics, there are classes, 
with all respect to the USF catalog, which is a beautiful one that can only be taken in Florence. And they're marvelous classes, and I cannot say with 100% certainty, but almost 100% certainty, you'll never have a chance to take these classes again and to do them in such an incredible setting. And the other reason that they're so wonderful is Grace touched on the Student Life Office. And I have worked, and I'm not saying this because, because Grace and Mattia are on the line, I, and so I would say this to you even if they're afterwards, but truly our colleagues and our friends at FUA have been um, truly the most extraordinary partners we've worked with. And I, and I hate to tell you how many years I've done this uh, and worked with so many institutes, but it's, um, it's difficult to find anybody who can surpass their work, their work with students, their work with academics. So when Grace was referencing President Ganuji's mission of balancing the academics and the cultural experiences, the academics, their faculty, courses offered, world-class, unique, central and singular to Italy in many cases, and the student life component unsurpassed and in a setting that's, you know, beyond belief, so extraordinary. So I'm not saying that again because they're on the on the line here with us, but it's absolutely true. So I have every confidence that each of you is going to have the most important and impactful, positive, life-changing experience. And I think we have one final very important question because I know that uh, many of you on the call or some, at least some of you are thinking about the Science B session. So Megan is asking about the balance of the science courses while enjoying the city. So um, what I can tell you, and again, this is from our perspective of hosting the wonderful science professors here in Florence every single year. Um, I definitely will say that your professors will support you 100% of the way. They are huge fans of the program. They do so much for the students who are part of the program. First clarification is that you'll be taking the class exactly. So if you're choosing the orgo chem courses, the biochemistry courses, you'll be taking the class with your faculty just as if you were in Florida, okay? Um, the advantage that you will have, and this is just something that we personally see on a yearly basis with the science students, is that you really do have that um, more closer and intimate access to your professor because um, you will see your professor every single day. You'll get to know your classmates really well. The classroom setting will be smaller than, um, you know, some of the lecture hall settings that you see um, at your campus location, whether you're in Tampa or Sarasota. Um, so it will be a different setting, but it will be the same class, okay, if you are enrolling these courses. Certainly, they're challenging courses. Um, however, you know, you'll also have to think about the fact that you and your professors are in this Florence setting. They want you to be successful and they want you to enjoy the city, obviously, because they also love the city themselves. Otherwise, they wouldn't be leading the program every single year. So um, I think that it's very important to prioritize uh, your academic dedication to the course. And so, I mean, I'm sorry if this sounds kind of trite, but, you know, make sure to do all those quizzes, make sure to study hard, make sure to knock off your assignments and make time for them. Go to class. You don't want to get any absences. Um, but on the other hand, you know, you will have that constant and very close access to your faculty members who will guide you through the process. And if I can add something to Megan, is like, you know, we all know that I've, I've been also been students and I've also studied abroad. And, you know, a life of a student is always busy, you know, courses, exam, clubs, sports, dealing with parents and, and stuff. The life of a study abroad student, so you here, you will just have to study and enjoy the experience. So that's it. All the rest, it's not even a frame. OK, so of course you will have time. And when study and enjoy the, the experience, they match together, then you're like, you're done and you will have the best experience of your life. Then, of course, I'm sorry, but you will have what I call the post study abroad depression when you're going back home. That, we are not talking about this, OK, Later. but you will enjoy it. You will enjoy, I'm sure. Okay. All right, that is our time. It's now 1231. Oh. Um, I feel like this group could talk for days uh, about all the wonderful opportunities that await our students in Florence. Um, hopefully you all have a, now a clearer picture of what life will be like in Florence. Thank you so much for joining us um, and a special thank you to Mattia and Grace and, and of course Jim for, for chiming in and giving us um, real insight um, into this study abroad opportunity for our students. Um, just so folks know, we're gonna keep this up for the next three or four minutes. So if you wanna throw some questions in the chat, 
Um, everybody will be signing off, but I'll collect that those questions and send them out to the appropriate people if you have some questions on the side. But but once again, thank you all so much for, for coming. Uh, we look forward to doing a couple more of these so you guys can continue to plan and prepare and and have the most amazing experience in Florence uh, in the coming uh, the summer. Excuse me, it's coming up already. I can't wait. Thank you so much for hosting us. Grazie mille. Grazie. Ciao. 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 And feel free to log off.